Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disso. Well, finally, we are able to share with you the details on how the new RTX 3000 cards from NVIDIA perform. I asked HID Evolution to send me the GE66 Raider because I personally own the Dragon Shield Edition. And I wanted to give you an apples to apples comparison using the same chassis. Now, my Dragon Shield has an i9 10980HK and an RTX 2070 Super at 115 watts, and the new model I have is powered by a 10th gen Intel i7 10870H, which runs 100 MHz slower than the 10875H used previously, and an RTX 3070 rated at 130 watts. Both the 2070 Super and the 3070 have 8GB of G DDR6 memory, and both systems have 32GB of 3200MHz RAM running in dual channel. Now my configuration costs $2,300 and you can get a 3080 max p model for $2,800. Now both come with a 300Hz 1080p display. Whilst a GE66 with my GPU but not the Dragon Shield edition is available for $1,900. Now that is a 21% price increase so we want to see at least that difference in performance. Now. I have only had this laptop for, you know, just two, two days. HID Evolution replaced it with GLID GC Extreme on both the CPU and the GPU, and they got it to me as fast as they possibly could. Now, this meant that I had to work solidly for 25 hours over the weekend to get all the testing done. As I not only wanted to test it uh, against the RTX 2070 Supermodel, but also the desktop RTX 2080. And since some of you may be buying an RTX 3070 laptop with a QHD panel, I wanted also to test all the 12 games at 1080p and 1440p. So that is actually 72 tests that generated about 80 gigabytes of gameplay footage, which I will show you so that you can observe the, uh, the clock speeds, the frame rates, the power levels, and also the temperatures. Now, if you do find this video useful, smash that like button and perhaps subscribe, as I have four ASUS Zen 3 laptops coming in too. Now the cooling system on the 2021 model and the 2020 model are identical. The only change that they have actually made is uh, changing the speaker, which does sound a bit better. Now my next, uh, my next video will actually be the review of the GE66, where I'll, I'll also showcase the frame rates at various quality settings. So first up is Red Dead Redemption 2. I did do a typo on the overlay. It's not a 2070 Super Max Q, but a 115 watt Max P. Most of the time, the 3070 would stick at 125 watts, but in this game, it would boost up to 134 watts at times, which was the highest I saw, and this was with the CPU at 40 watts. In fact, the i7-10870H always used less than its rated 45 watts, and this translates to a nice CPU temperature in the mid-70s, and the RTX 3070 in the low 70s. Now, I must point out that I undervolted both systems by 80 millivolts, and that you're only using the auto fan. There was actually no need for the max fan at all. But you will notice when I showcase the 3070 at 1080p and 1440p side by side, the GPU utilization at 87% at 1080p and it's 94% at 1440p, showing that we are more CPU limited at the lower resolution. Now compared to the 2070 Super, the 3070 is 18% faster at 1080p and 25% faster at 1440p and on the whole, performs slightly better than the desktop 2080. Now let's look at Cyberpunk 2077, as that is a very GPU-intensive game. Even at 1080p, the 3070 is being utilised 96% of the time, which is much better. The CPU is using only 19 watts here, and I believe that the extra power is allowing the 3070 to dynamically boost higher than what we saw in the previous title. Now going up to 1755 MHz. The thermals are still fantastic. The game was tested using Ray Tracing Ultra and DLSS set to balance and it was very playable at 1080p. Now at 1440p the 3070 was still playable, more so than the 2070 Super who had 1% lows below 30fps. At 1080p the 3070 is 29% faster than the 2070 Super and at 1440p it's a whopping 34% faster. Now this shows that when the GPU is being worked really hard, especially with the ray tracing thrown into the mix, the 3070 pays for its cost of admission. Now on the other hand, games like PUBG don't show as much benefit at 1440p. It's not too bad, about 20% faster. Now at 1080p we only see a 4% gain over the 2070 Super and that is my concern. 
Perhaps we will see better scaling with the Ryzen 5000 CPUs. Now, Death Stranding was a strange one. The performance of the 3070 was underwhelming at 1080p, being slower than the 2070 Super. Now, it was boosting up okay, but notice that the utilization is only at 72%. Now, perhaps we are seeing a driver issue here. At 1080p, the 2070 Super is actually 11% faster than the 3070, although at 1440p, they are the same. Now, I would definitely expect the 3070 to perform the same as the desktop 2080. Now, I use the inbuilt benchmark on Far Cry New Dawn, which sees very little difference at 1080p. Now, this game is very CPU dependent, even at ultra settings. So, perhaps the extra 300 MHz on me i9 offsets any advantage the 2070 can bring. Indoor scenes see the GPU pull 125 watts and even 95% utilization, but outdoor scenes where you have more distant details being rendered, the power drops to 115 watts and only a 55% utilization. I do think the i7 is the limiting factor here. Even at 1440p, we only see a 10% improvement. The desktop 2080 powered with the i9 10900K shows a more respectable 20% gain. Overwatch, on the other hand, absolutely loved the RTX 3070, which pulled 125 watts and had 95% utilization. Now, even at epic settings, we are getting close to 300 FPS. And at 1080p, it beats the desktop 2080 by 11% and the 2070 Super by 25%. Now, this is more like what we should expect from a 3070. Shadow of the Tomb Raider likes a fast CPU as well, but it also does respond well when you overclock a graphics card. Here, I test it using ray tracing at Ultra, and for 1440p, I use DLSS. Now, everything looks good. The 3070 uses up to 130 watts, and the CPU is below 70 degrees, and is definitely an improvement over the 2070 Super, where it is 26% faster at 1080p, and a whopping 32% faster at 1440p, and very close indeed to the desktop 2080. However, when we use no ray tracing, the 1080p performance gap closes down to 14%, highlighting how good the 3000 series is for ray tracing. Let's look at Metro Exodus, where I also use the inbuilt benchmark, testing using ray tracing at Ultra with DLSS. Here, at 1080p, the 3070 is using up to 132 watts and 98% utilization. The CPU only needs 15 watts, which is much less than what we were seeing in systems last year. I believe this is Dynamic Boost 2.0 at work and shows that when uh, the GPU workload is uh, sufficient, it makes sense for most of the power to go to the graphics card. At 1080p, it matches the desktop 2080 and beats the 2070 Super by 19%, but at 1440p, it is 37% faster, which is amazing. Now, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was tested using uh, DX12 Ultra settings, using a single player game. Now, there's not a whole lot between the 2070 Super and the 3070 here, despite a high 98% utilization. Perhaps because the GPU was only using up to 110 watts. In fact, we see only 11% improvement, even at 1440p. Now, I do find that Star Wars Battlefront 2 is tough to play using DX12 and much preferred DX11. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was tested using the inbuilt benchmark using ultra high settings. Now, this game is pretty GPU intensive and we see good utilization and again the CPU using only about 18 watts. At 1080p, we are about 15% faster than the 2070 Super and 20% at 1440p. The final game is Warzone. Here it is using high settings and ray tracing. It's one of the few games where the i7 10870H actually uses 45 watts. Notice that the GPU is now only uh, using about 115 to 120 watts and the 3070 is being poorly utilized. Consequently, there is not a lot between the 2070 Super and the 3070 at 1080p. At 1080p, we see a 9% difference, but once we get to 1440p, this goes up to 44%, so I think you can agree that we are seeing a recurring theme going on here. Looking at 3D Mark, where I show the Time Spy and the Fire Strike GPU scores, the 3070 is close to a desktop 2080, and the 3060 is close to a 2070 Super. Now, averaging out all of the frame rates, we see that the, at 1080p, the RTX 3070 is exactly the same as a desktop 2080, and only 12% ahead of the 2070 Super. At 1440p, this does increase to 18%, but still less than what I was hoping for. 
Now removing the strange death stranding result, this increases it to 15% at 1080p and 21% at 1440p. Still, not great since this laptop is only available with a 1080p panel. Let's have a quick look at rendering performance. So in Blender 2.9, using the classroom render and measuring the time taken, the 3070 was 28% faster than the 2070 Super. And using the V-Ray RTX benchmark, where it uses the GPU to render an image, the 3070 is a massive 82% faster. Now, professional users, this extra performance will be fantastic. So how would I sum up the GE66 with the RTX 3070? Well, first off, it runs very cool. And this is just with the auto fan. Now, I do feel that the i7 10870H CPU is holding it back somewhat, and we will see, you know, how well the new Ryzen 5000 CPUs and see if it solves this situation with 1080p panels. I suspect we'll still be somewhat limited. At least you know that you can get uh, some great frame rates even uh, if you choose a 1440p panel. And for those who uh, want to use 3D rendering software or ray tracing, the new 3000 series certainly does very well. Now, is it worth upgrading? Well, I think if you're using a 2070 Max-Q or below, I think it is a decent upgrade. But for 15% extra performance, I won't be selling my Dragon Shield. Thank you for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.